The crankshaft and camshaft in your classic British cars have to work in perfect unison. The link that maintains that unison is composed by a pair of gears and a timing chain. These are timing chain and timing gears. Now, your shop manual does a pretty good job of telling you how to install these properly. However, there's a growing problem. First, a bit of history. Okay, these classic British cars are slowly disappearing. However, they demonstrate a great deal of sticking power. Have you seen any Ford Fairlanes or Ford Pintos lately? Any Chevy Vegas and Novas running around in your neighborhood? How about a Plymouth Valiant? How about a Volkswagen Squareback? No, they're almost all gone, okay? At one time, the original Toyota Corollas, the little ones, and the original Honda Civics, the little ones, were on every corner. They're gone too. Today, you have a better chance of seeing an MGB or a TR6 on the road than any of these other cars that I've just mentioned. They have great sticking power. Now, despite their ability to hang in there, every year a handful of these classic British cars goes to the wrecking yard with very little hope of ever coming home. As the quantity of these cars declines, the market for the parts shrinks. The parts manufacturers want to keep making the parts for every application, but the realities of the marketplace cannot be ignored. As soon as the market for a part shrinks to the point where diminishing returns demands a change, a change must be made. Manufacturers are constantly making adjustments just to try to stay alive. Now, a little known fact about a number of these parts that are used in these cars is that they also fit other cars and other applications. Some of the timing gears, for example, are a good example of that. The same gear could have been used in more than one motor with only a change in where the timing marks were stamped on the gear. Now, imagine you're a company and you're making timing gears. Imagine one timing gear is made for two different applications. Okay, like these here. Okay, um, the only difference is where you put the stamp. So these are different, and I've put a, a white mark just for example to illustrate where the stamp might be. Okay, that's the only difference between the two of them. Now the market is shrinking. What are you going to do? Well, remember the timing marks are the only difference between the two gears. You might just simply stop adding the timing marks to the gears, and when you do, you can now just stock one gear. You've cut your inventory in half, you've cut your associated costs in half, and instead of abandoning the manufacture of two different gears, you're able to do it with just one, and you're going to allow people to continue to drive and enjoy their classic cars. Of course, there's a drawback. When you take the timing marks off a gear, it becomes pretty difficult to install. You've created a headache for the person who buys your gears and who needs those marks so he can install them. That's where this series of videos comes in. So what should you do? Well, if you buy a set of timing gears, first look to see if they have the timing marks. If they don't, don't remove the old gears from your engine yet. If your new gears have the timing marks, great, just follow the instructions in the shop manual, install them, you're done. If you get a new set of gears and they don't have the timing marks anymore, look at the old gears that are in your engine. You might have to clean them a little bit to see them, okay? If the marks are on the old gears, you're fine. Remove your old gears, use those as a template to mark where to put the marks in your new gears. Now your new gears are marked, install according to your manual. You're fine. If neither your new gears nor your old gears have timing marks, some people will tell you to rotate your engine to number one TDC. They'll tell you to mark the old gears with a punch in a way that's easy to work with, for example, where the two points are closest together. Okay, and then they're going to tell you to remove those gears, make those marks on your new gears, and put your new gears on in exactly the same spot. Okay, that's a little tricky. And so long as you don't move the crankshaft or the camshaft, this is probably going to work. And well, while it does work, this technician is not comfortable with this because it's just too dangerous if you do it wrong. So I'd recommend that you follow the steps outlined in our next video. Now, what happens if you remove the old gears, move the crankshaft or the camshaft, and then realize you have no marks? The old gears don't have any marks, the new gears don't have any marks, and you don't know where the cam or the crank are anymore. Are you cooked? Is the motor beyond salvation? No. You can still do this job, and it won't be as hard as you think. In our next video, we'll show you how to do it.